went canvassing before? Yes. Okay, all right, so you so you know how it goes. Yeah, I know. I think the first time I went canvassing was for the marriage equality referendum. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of like, at first I felt like really intimidated, you know, yeah. going up and knocking on someone's door of the blue, but most people are very friendly, so you get used to it. And uh, from what I've heard, we've canvassed in some areas, like Scaries, where they say that they actually were the first people who've been to their door. So we'll see how it goes today. Yeah. And if, Thanks. My name is Roslyn, okay. and I'm running as an independent in the upcoming election. Okay. So I just wanted to introduce myself and Perfect. ask for your vote. Okay, lovely. That's great. So okay. a big part of my policy is actually centered around digital democracy. So that means allowing people to have a say in how I cast my vote in the law between elections. So instead of just voting every five years, and hoping people do what they said they were going to do, yeah. which they rarely do, uh, <laughs> it's a way to actually, you know, kind of control that process and sure. get in there and have a sure. say and debate with each other. Yeah. And some of my other policies are, are listed down sure, here and are on my lovely. web page. That's great. Okay, okay so great. Okay, have a good day. Much. Thank you very much. Love. See you. Thanks Thank you. I get, I get at the door sometimes, oh, where are you from originally? But we do have one of the highest percentage of foreign-born residents in this constituency. And often <coughs> I run in at the door to people from, from various backgrounds from, from all over the world. But would that come up then, your accent, and they'd say, well, why are you running for the doll if you're not from here? Or Yeah, um, sometimes I'm on much older people usually, usually not I'm on youngish. Mm. Uh, how does that feel though when you hear that? Oh, really bad. <laughs> yeah. So, um, actually a big part of my policy is actually introducing digital democracy, which means allowing people to have a say in how you cast your vote, how I cast my vote in the doll between elections. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love presents. Do you? <laughs> you want one of these? It's the only present I've got today, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great, yeah, sure, terrific. Thanks a million, have a good day, see you. That's the best. <laughs> Sorry? I have no interest in it. In politics? No. No, no not at all? No, I'm not being real to your that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're no. not going to vote at all? No. No? All the other parties got the same response. Yeah. Answer. Okay, um, like, I'm not with a party. You can leave it in. I'll yeah, leave I'll, it. Leave it. I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it in. Take, 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 yeah, um, because actually my policy is actually in introducing digital democracy, which means allowing people to have a say in how I have my vote in the doll between elections. Yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of quite disenfranchised or disillusioned with the whole voting process myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But take a look at it, you yeah, know, no, and you can see what you like. Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 yeah, no, I understand. It's fine. No problem. Have a good day. See you. Can you explain what uh, Fix the Road politics is oh, and what that means for Irish politics? For me, it's like... Okay, you know, if you fix the road, you know, there was a pothole in my road and you fixed it, so I'll vote for you for the rest of my life. So really what you have is national politicians interfering in local politics to try to get votes for people in national elections, and it kind of wipes away, you know, any kind of voting based on ideas or issues, you know, national issues, even international issues, and reducing everything to who fixed the road when, even if it was 20 years ago. Is this particularly bad in Ireland, or is it in a lot of the democracies you've studied? No, I've never seen it anywhere else. The thing that's come up around unabated and what she's talking about I mean, is true. There are really narrow, really dangerous roads around here, and somebody is going to get killed on them. So, and the, when someone tells me about it, I feel that I have responsibility to do something about it. I mean, I know about it now, they feel like they've told someone, I mean, I don't want anyone to get hurt, um, but I also feel like it's wrong to prioritize things just on you know a random basis, what I've heard about. We should have like some kind of a system in place that deals with things on a needs basis. You feel like you're doing tons of media and you're really out there and everything, but like you're barely scratching the surface and you're trying to compete also with, you know, the national attention people have. So um, you have to kind of put things in perspective, like the not la amount of effort it's going to take to really become a household name, as it were. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I'll definitely run for the European elections. I mean, it's been, I, I'm happy because it's been a really good experience. I feel like I feel like we've gotten a good response. we use the single transferable vote, also called STV, and that means that we get a potentially very long ballot paper and you're allowed to rank each candidate in order of your preference. So you put a one beside the person you like the most 
uh, two beside the person you like the second most, three, and so on down the line. And you don't need to fill out uh, to give everyone a number. You can just fill out your first preference if you like. Uh, you can give like a one, two, and three. You can give, or you can put a preference beside every person on the ballot paper. It's up to you what you do. So once everyone's cast their votes, um, what they do, and what they're doing here, actually at the moment, um, is open up all the, all the um, ballot boxes and tabulate the first preference votes. Once that's done, someone may have gone over the quota and be deemed elected on the first preferences as well. The extra vote will then be redistributed according to what the number two mark was on them. Once they've been distributed, they uh, either someone else will be elected, they'll go over the quota and they'll repeat the process. But in the event that that doesn't happen, they start eliminating the candidates who received the least first preferences and redistributing their number two preferences up the line until someone is elected. We have 15 candidates in our constituency, so it's great. it was always going to be a lot more competitive than it has been in the past, so I'm, I'm actually very, very pleased with that result. Okay, it's not terribly interesting to because you are all about allowing more democracy than ever before for candidates. Explain how that works. Yeah, we also had a very different election message than, than most people. So um, I'm campaigning on a platform of digital democracy, as you mentioned, which means allowing people using software to allow people to vote online between elections. And I would agree to be bound by the will of my constituents, um, provided that they vote in sufficiently large numbers, um, with uh, my vote in the doll. So I would vote as my constituents would want me to vote. So it's actually implementing what representative democracy is supposed to be about actually really representing your constituents. After an election, we don't know what our constituents want on any particular matter. You know, something could surface three years down the line or four years down the line, which people haven't considered at all at the time that they were voting. This helps to deal with that situation. What happens if the voters come back and tell you that they want you to vote some way and you really, really feel close to it? Are you ready to face that? Yeah, I am. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. This is one of the first things I thought of. Of course, you know, I mean, a promise is a promise. And I said I would, so I will. But that's the great thing about, about digital democracy. You can say, it's not about me. You see, if I were to say, I declare, me, Rosalind Fuller, I declare that the dirt shall go here, or, you know, okay, I'm going to get a lot of people really pissed off at me and they're going to do everything they can possibly do to bring me down. But if you say, look, we've decided together that this is where it has to go, right? That this is the best option. Who are you going to take your revenge on? You see what I mean? Mm. It's safer that way. It allows you to make some societal decisions without it being held up by two or three votes. And Irish oh, elections can hinge on just a few votes. That's why no one wants to piss anybody off. Mm. And that's why progress doesn't get made. Like those are your ballot papers there then? Yeah, these are my ballot papers. So, um, obviously, I'm getting a lot of I've, uh, a lot of twos and threes from Claire Daly, and kind of two, threes, fours from Barry Martin, and uh, from Sinn Féin, more like five, sixes. So, and other than that, I don't know. But like, how come you're getting seven or eleven in ones that have been like fully filled out? Yeah, I know. Some of them are like fully, I'm amazed at the amount of people who fully fill them out. And then give me like, yeah, an eleven. I mean, <laughs> for some reason, that's more annoying than getting like a blank. <laughs> like, hey, wait, eleven? <laughs> like, ah. They will probably try to eliminate uh, either O'Connell uh, or O'Connell and De Bruyne at the same time. Because De Bruyne has enough votes, we, they won't touch us. He has enough votes to bring Daly across, so therefore uh, we will survive into the third count. I currently say you will be eliminated in the fourth count. No, yeah. yeah. In the fourth count. You can't, you can't see any way where it's a uh, chance of getting a seat now, then? Oh, no. I mean, you have to do way better. I think mathematically that's pretty impossible. Okay, there he is. There, there you go. You know, there. This is kind of, we're waiting at the moment for Dara to arrive because he's probably been elected on the first count. So these are his, his adoring fans. I think they're going to uh, applaud him now. It's kind of interesting to see this from the other side, you know, to, to not just see something like this on TV, uh, but to see how it works in real life. This is how they do it. Like they, they show up if they're elected and they don't sit around and wait if they're not elected. Here, um, yeah. Like, how do you feel? Well, it's great. Look, it's a great honor. Uh, you know, I've worked very hard for it. I've been both sides of it. I've won elections before and I've lost them. So, I admire anyone first who puts their name forward. But I guess democracy in action now. Yeah. How do you figure there was such a big swing back to your party when um, it was a bit? There was a swing against it. Yeah, there sure was. Because I was there in 2011. There was a massive swing against. This didn't just happen in this campaign. 
We had local elections two years ago where we built our base up further. We have some excellent uh, local authority councillors uh, in the Fingal area. And we've worked together as a team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that we're doing our best to rebuild trust with the electorate. We still have a bit to go on that, but it, this is a significant step forward. I probably spent a couple of thousand euros on this total, right? You know, every, including everything. The deposit I had to pay, I had to pay a 500 euro deposit. Um, the flyers I had to print, you know, transportation needs and stuff like that. Um, but the limit for a five seater is 45,000 or so per candidate. And some parties are running two candidates with the expectation of only one getting elected. So in effect, they're running on 90,000 uh, for one seat. Um, it's very hard to compete with that. It's kind of hard to stay in people's consciousness. And not only that, they have a party behind them. So every time someone from their party is on radio, is on TV, you know, that's coverage that ultimately accrues to them. Okay. Still wait. Uh, we've been here for um, eight and a half hours now, and we're waiting. We're still waiting for the result of the first count. was thinking two, three hundred votes, would have been, I would have been really happy with two or three hundred votes. Um, and I was afraid that I'd end up with like single digits or, you know, maybe 15 or 16 votes. So I'm really, really happy with this. people make is thinking that their life is a Hollywood movie like you're gonna you're gonna start and you're going to um, you know everyone's gonna love you and you know you're just gonna blast to the top and it's gonna be amazing it doesn't happen in real life you know I mean look at me 15 years ago or whatever how old am I okay yeah 15 years ago or so I'm you know I was pricing galvanized piping you know with actual price tags in the warehouse of a cooperative in a town of a population of 2,000 in Canada, you know what I mean? I mean, that was my life. I knew, I hadn't been anywhere, like, I mean, sometimes I have to pinch myself and be like, wow, I live in Ireland, this is amazing. Uh, I'm really grateful to the people who vote for me with their first preference this time around, because even a lot of them, I got emails from people who said, you won't win, but I'll vote for you anyway. That's really cool. Uh, thanks very much, because we will win eventually. When we do win, I'm going to change how politics is run in this country and potentially beyond forever. So this is going to be worth waiting for. It's going to be worth having done this. Your vote now is going to make a big, big difference in your future life.